I made this dark room as sort of a metaphor for the dark side of digital culture. And there's a lot we could talk, talk about in the darkness. So walk on in and uh, sit on a bean bag. You may feel a little cramped and uncomfortable in here. That's part of digital culture. It's not always comfortable. The internet and digital culture, as I said, is where we live. Online, globally connected, networked culture. And the many online ap applications that we use have a dark side. Let's turn our environment to midnight to enhance this dark room, make it even darker. In the Second Life viewer, you can choose world, environment, midnight. I'll stand over here under my first slide. You can zoom in on me. Look at the sign above me and it, it, it outlines just a few of the examples of the many problems that we face in the dark side of digital culture. Each one of us has our own personal dashboard on our own personal digital device. Yours doesn't look like mine. Our devices have whatever we choose for our incoming information, our own personal apps. And as we choose our incoming information, that means we're all creating our own information landscapes. I'll walk this way. You can use your camera to follow me. Too much information, as I said, too much information is as problematic as too little. Before the, the Gutenberg press, people had very, very little access to information. And now we're drowning in it. That's just as problematic. We have millions of choices every day to make to decide what information comes on our devices in our, in our pockets. Take a look at this slide over here, FOMO. Anybody know what FOMO means? Ever experienced it? F-O-M-O. -O. That's this sensation that you feel that you're missing out on something. There's something out there happening and I don't know where it is. I've got to find it. <clears throat> FOMO, fear of missing out. It's a real phenomenon, especially with teens who sleep with their digital device and their phone right beside them 24 seven. It's a huge problem, uh, problem for some teens that some call it internet addiction. Some don't really believe that's what it is. But another problem that we face, this is a huge problem that we all have, whether we like it or not, we tend to follow and form a network of people who agree with us. It's called confirmation bias. Look at the Venn diagram here. The people that we, that we like to follow and bring into our online communities are the ones that confirm our own belief systems. It's only natural with human nature to want to agree with each other, but that is not the way we learn. Social media apps lure us into following people that we agree with. But we learn through debate and discussion of new ideas and perspectives that are different than our own. And we say, hey, that's not how I think about it. Think about this. Challenge our thinking. Think critically. Deep learning requires debate and what Vygotsky, my favorite child development psychologist, calls collision, collision with other ideas. And what about privacy? Sometimes I say privacy died for me in 2008. I joke about it, but it's not really a joking matter. It's true. It did die. There is no privacy online. So what about privacy? Do you have any concerns? Is privacy dead now that big data companies are mining our data and controlling the information that we receive? Just like Big Brother watching? We have tremendous obstacles to overcome in digital culture. And they all relate to meta-literacy. 
privacy, cybersecurity, confirmation bias. It's easy to follow and interact only with those we agree with. This dark room can be frightening. It can be scary. You can feel like there's no hope ahead of, for us and there's no way out of this darkness. But I do remain hopeful. These obstacles can certainly be seen as opportunities if we're truly aware of them. You can type a Y in the chat if, if you have concerns about privacy. If this does make you a little feel a little worried, type a Y. I'm going to stand under the slide that's about digital citizenship here, my closing one in the dark room. You may worry about all the things I've talked about in here, and you may think, how can we get out of this darkness? How can we keep our humanity in the metaverse? Well, I believe we can get out of the dark side of digital culture. We can become good digital citizens, and that's the only way out, is by becoming good digital citizens, understanding meta-literacy, and embracing digital citizenship.